Our children! Our choice! When, earlier this month, Newsnight investigated the increasingly heated daily protests by parents and activists outside of Birmingham Primary School, it was clear from the language being used by some campaigners that they believed aspects of relationship and sex education teaching could affect children's sexuality. You've also said that this is about indoctrination and recruitment. Do you think children can be recruited to be gay? Well, you can condition them to accept this as being a normal way of life and it, it makes uh, the children more promiscuous as they grow older. Shame, shame. The protests were sparked by concern among some parents about aspects of equality teaching at another Birmingham school, but they have since spread to other towns and cities as part of a coordinated campaign. Today though, Birmingham City Council fought back, winning an interim High Court injunction banning protesters from gathering in an exclusion zone around Anderton Park School. Campaigners have also been banned from making offensive comments about teachers on social media. But tonight, one of the men who led the campaign indicated his apparent intention to continue. In a video posted on Facebook, Shaquille Asfar urged parents to continue to make their voices heard. We will safeguard our values and our family values and if this government wants to use tactics to silence us, we will challenge you. Even before today's developments, the row represented a significant clash between liberal values and religious sensitivities. Now, as it raises questions of the rights of parents to protest, the battle shows no sign of going away. Well, tonight, the Education Secretary, Damien Hines, issued a statement welcoming the court injunction. We did ask the protest leaders to join us, but they weren't available. Earlier, though, I spoke to Amjal Masroor, an imam and founder of Communities in Action, which promotes community cohesion. I asked him what he made of today's judgment. I think if you stop people from protesting, which is their legitimate democratic right, I think it's going to make things worse. We should be engaging with people. We should be sitting down and discussing and not using our sticks or the law that we have to curtail people's freedom to protest, express their views. I see a huge gap in a civilized conversation that the city council could have orchestrated, could have steered and could have managed, but they haven't done it. How, though, could it be easily resolved when the parents and activists are absolutely sure that they do not want any teaching about equality in the eyes of the law for LGBT people. I think the idea that uh, equality therefore equals one side more equal than the other is the problem. Currently, in the narrative that we have seen, both sides need to respect that each of the sides have the right to their view. The Muslim communities who believe that uh, sex outside marriage is not allowed and sex is only allowed within a man and a woman in a marital relationship have their right to believe that. And they have every right to teach their children exactly that. And the LGBT community have the right to believe their, their views. And I think there is a middle ground. The middle ground is how do we create an inclusive narrative where we can respect each other. But we have an Equality Act of 2010. Should all children be taught that being gay is okay? You don't have to have your sexual orientation written on your forehead to be inclusive. You can be included in any conversation. We don't have to talk about sex and sexuality when we talk about equality. Muslims are saying something very simple. They're saying, we would like to teach our children ethics. We would like to teach our children morality. And in Islamic morality, I'm afraid, sex outside marriage is not allowed. Where do we go after that? If the community outside or the LGBT community is asking Muslim community to abandon their faith, it's a big ask and that's not going to happen. And if we're asking LGBT community to abandon their belief, it's not going to happen. I'm here to ask, can we find a middle ground? And I believe we can. Have you told your own children then that it's okay to be gay? I've told my children that in Islam, sex outside marriage, outside marriage is not allowed. Sex is only allowed between man and a woman. So it's Sex not is okay to be gay. A responsible, it, according to Islam, no, and that right. is the fact of the uh, of of the faith itself. You can't get away from it, can you? I think the most important thing is to respect that view, that a faith gives that particular view, and a people, 1.8 billion people of the world, have a right to that view. You may disagree with that, of course, that's your right. 
So as long as we can create a space where we are both respectful of each other's rights to holding that view, I think we can start that discussion and we can start progressing. Otherwise, we'll be militant and we'll see uh, uh, regress in our community. We have seen a post on Facebook from one of the leading activists in this row uh, saying that despite the injunction, he wishes the protest to go ahead next week and for people to come along. Do you uh, agree with that or do you not agree with that? I can scream from the pulpits saying don't go to a protest. Nobody's going to listen to me. I'm just wasting my time. It's people's legitimate democratic right to protest. And city council can bring as many injunctions as they like, but they cannot silence people's discontent. Only way we can create harmony and peace is by dialogue, by communicating by having love and respect. And that's what's missing in the current narrative, I'm afraid. I'm John Manzura. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Well, Sarah Hewitt Clarkson is the head teacher of Anderton Park School, and she is with me now. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, the ruling today means a short term pause, but it doesn't solve anything in the longer term. No, it doesn't. But it's, it's a step forward to, to solving those, those issues. And it's a step forward from a judge who has looked at some evidence and has said, OK, this doesn't appear to be uh, peaceful. This appears this, this is causing harm and distress. You heard uh, from the imam there that there's not enough dialogue being had. Is there something more that you as a head teacher that the Education Authority could be doing in terms of dialogue? Well, we've always had dialogue. I think every school in the country has had dialogue with its parents all the time. Um, this was kind of thrust upon us um, from almost nowhere because we've been, we've been talking about these things in school since 2010. So um, the, the conversation is, is uh, an odd one because it's new, but it's been, it's been thrust upon us. So we continue to talk to parents. Is there a, a, an, another way to deal with this or is there just a fundamental incompatibility between religious conservatism and the law of the land? There is a way to deal with it because we all, we all live in this country and we all abide by the rules of this land. Uh, the Equality Act being one of them, which is an excellent uh, law that, that protects people's protected characteristics and there are nine of them so this isn't just about LBGT this is about race and religion and age and all the other protected characteristics which is a fantastic law and actually when we talk to a lot of our parents who come from all over the world they say we've chosen to come here because we are safe and we are equal and that's not how we felt in in our own country it's something to be very proud of in Britain and in terms of threading these conversations through the school, are they just part of the day and daily life of the way that these children are taught in school? Absolutely. At our school, we don't have any lesson plans. We don't have a scheme of work. It's just part of our ethos. Uh, when parents start school, we get them to sign something to say they understand the ethos mm -hmm. of our school. The Equality Act is very important to us. Um, we talk about it in assembly, maybe, or just it's a bit like kindness or um, being polite. We don't have lessons on being kind and polite. It's just what we expect. And probably the largest thing we do in school actually uh, when it comes to equality is we talk about how girls and boys are equal mm -hmm. and we try and break stereotypes for all children and all people because stereotypes are very damaging what about sensitivity though to different religious views of course um we've all taught in our school for a long time i've been there for nearly 13 years so this isn't new um and religious beliefs are very important to many many of our families and so when we talk about something like this it's a sensitive we say not not everybody believes that two 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 women can get married or that two men can have a child and talk to your parents about that at home because they, they can explain a little bit more about that but as a head teacher do you think that you'd be in dereliction of your duty if you didn't teach what is the law of the land Absolutely. There is a public sector equality duty placed upon me as uh, for all public sector workers. Sarah Hewitt-Clarkson, thank you very much for joining us tonight.